how to go makeup on that <laughs> oh no today we're gonna be making a vegan chocolate mousse and I'm talking about a real mousse you know something airy and light and chocolatey that you could never tell doesn't have any eggs or gelatin in it because let me tell you the other day I was triggered by a vegan chocolate mousse recipe that I saw on another vegan account it was a very big vegan account and on a good day it was a pudding there are a lot of recipes out there on the internet for vegan chocolate mousse that involve avocado, coconut milk, or tofu. No. Those are gonna give you like a dense, almost soft serve texture, which might still taste good, but it's technically not a mousse. And you bet I'm getting the cooking Bible out to prove my point. These are soft, light, and airy desserts made with beaten egg whites. Mousse means froth or foam in French. And if you're wondering what kind of psycho actually does cookbook referencing to prove a point, it's me. Hi. But anyway, let's get started. To get that froth and foamy effect without using egg whites, what we're going to be using is aquafaba, which is the water that comes inside of a chickpea can. I know, weird, but it works, believe me. Trust the process. So I put this can of chickpeas inside the fridge a few hours ago to get it nice and cold. And the reason why we want it to be cold is that it's just gonna work better that way. To drain this, I'm using this nifty thing over here that I found on Amazon. We will not be needing these. This is dinner, set them aside. This gray, little bit stinky water though, that's what we're gonna use. Again, trust the process. I promise this will become an amazing chocolate mousse. And we're gonna be using a KitchenAid or a stand mixer to do this. Is it possible to do it by hand? Honestly, I am not too sure. It would be a lot of work to do this manually, so I would say definitely use a stand mixer or a hand mixer if you got one. We're gonna measure 200 milliliters of the aquafaba into the bowl. One can only has 155, we need a second can. And there's absolutely no way I'm gonna wait another two hours for another can of chickpeas to cool, so I'm just gonna add the extra 50, well, extra 45 mils at room temperature. I'm hoping because the majority of it is cold, that it's all gonna work out. Famous last words, we shall see. Looks like things are really foaming up, which is great. It means things are working out. And now we're gonna add some of our other ingredients. We got two teaspoons of lime juice, which is about half of a lime, a teaspoon of vanilla extract to give it that sweet flavor, and some regular sugar. Now we're gonna turn the KitchenAid back on. This is where the magic happens. We're going to leave the aquafaba to take shape, and this is gonna take a little while, so we're gonna increase the speed every four to five minutes, but in the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and melt the chocolate chips. You don't want the chocolate chips to burn, you want them to just melt, so we're gonna have to place the bowl in the microwave for 30 seconds at a time, stirring as we go along. Again, trust the process, otherwise you're gonna have some burnt chocolate. I think this might be ready. We're gonna do a test to see if it really is. So this is what things look like now. What we're trying to achieve is what's called stiff peaks, meaning when you look at the whisk, there's actually like a peak over here, you know? It's not just falling apart. But how you really know if it's ready to go, you're gonna have to turn this on your head. And listen, don't do this like in one smooth motion because that could turn into a huge disaster. Kind of feel it out, start turning it a little bit. Okay, doesn't seem like anything's moving. I think we're ready. So now that we've magically made meringue with the water from a chickpea can, it's time to actually put our mousse together. So we have our melted chocolate. We're not just going to throw everything in here because remember, we worked really hard to get those air bubbles and get that air into this foam. We do not want something heavy like the chocolate to just make it all fall apart. So we're going to slowly, very, very slowly and gently put this chocolate in here. I like to do just like a couple of spatulas full and then I'm gonna fold it in. Like, if you think you're not being gentle enough, you're probably not being gentle enough. <laughs> Air on the side of caution, you guys. It's so pretty once you start folding it in. So you're gonna do this and then you're gonna slowly add more. I have some girls coming over tomorrow 
and I just wanted like a quick dessert. This is so much easier than baking a whole cake. So this is what this looks like in the end. Obviously, we lost a little bit of the air, but it's okay. It's still very, very fluffy. So you want to make sure that all the marbling is done, that you just have a chocolatey mixture. And now we're just gonna plate this and get it ready. So I'm using these little coffee cups and aesthetic little glasses. You could just put it all in one, you know, big glass container if you like, and you know, just kind of chill it all in one thing. I like doing the individual portions. I think it makes it easier. Look at this. He's so cute. All right, these guys are all plated. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven total and as you can see they're all mismatched in different sizes but it gives you kind of an idea of how much mousse you got and i used a little bit of a just a paper towel to wipe the edges so it was nice and clean now these guys need to go in the fridge for two to three hours can you cut that time by just putting it in the freezer absolutely i just don't have any need for it because my friends aren't coming over until tomorrow so i can give these guys time to set but the main thing is they need to be refrigerated so the mousse can set and it can be stable. Then the next day, once the mousses were set, I went ahead and added a bunch of different toppings to them. You do not need to add any toppings. They're perfectly delicious without any of it, but I just found it fun and it gives them a bit, little bit of a twist. So I added toasted almonds to one, Biscoff cookies to another, Trader Joe's sugar cones, and just plain chocolate chips too. These all added a layer of texture and decoration to the desserts. I mean, Look at how beautiful these look. These all look so incredible. I love how they all turned out. I need to try one of them because you know I'm not going to serve anything to my friends that I haven't tried it before. I'm going to go with the cone because I feel like this one would probably get soggy if you don't serve it right away. So I'll make the sacrifice and eat it now. It looks so good. It's so light and airy. You see this right here? Now this is what the structure of a mousse should look like. And you can tell how it's so aerated and so light. All right, let's try this. It's so good. It just melts in your mouth. It's so absolutely delicious and light. I feel like I can eat this entire thing so easily. It's very chocolatey. As soon as it touches your tongue, it just melts away and disappears. Actually, what a mousse should feel, look, and taste like. So good. I'll have this full recipe in the description below, and if you make it, please tag me at Curious Cat Bakery. I love to see what you guys come up with. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me a lot in showing YouTube that there's some valuable information in here so that it shows it to more vegans and bakers in the algorithm. I will see you guys here next week with a new video. Until then, stay curious.